Hello guys and welcome to this video. My name is Aldoni and today I'm going to teach you that how we can make a selection sort program in the C language. So particularly this process is kind of same uh, in the C++ so there's no like a point of view if it, there's a difference between C and C++ while I'm talking about the selection sort because it's a little bit of a, like normal algorithm so let me just first of all show you that what's actually a let's see what actually a selection sort does let's let's make an array like a random array 5 1 3 4, 9 8 and 7 so this is our array and we're going to just like call the array let's just specify that a so we're going to call this array a and uh, what we what we want to do, get, do what we want to get the results we want to just make this array sorting in a this in a ascending order so which means the first 12 it should be the lowest number then should be the highest then should be the after the lowest number three nine uh, three one three five uh seven eight and uh, nine so you can see the now the now our array list is getting from going from the lowest to the highest so we need to sort this according to this using the uh, uh selection sort uh you can say structure or algorithm well you can say whatever you want to say but now let's talk about what actually the structure sort algorithm does so what did like first of all what this is going to do and first of all we need to create uh, two of the loops like first of all the first loop will just get into the index 5 and what will it will do in the index 5 we will create another loop in the index 5 while selecting index 5 then uh, it, will just, uh, it will just check if index 5 is smaller if index file is smaller than 1 and uh, that will that's a return as false so then what will we do we we will select one as a uh, one as as the lowest no number and uh, we'll con will continue checking for lowest number well here the problem is well like we really don't know if one is the lowest number there could be zero in somewhere in the list so what we then do we just take uh, five and we just take a one instead of five and let's see if one is smaller than three and that should give us two then we see if one is smaller than uh, five that should give us two then we see if one is smaller than uh, seven that should give us uh, two then we see if one is smaller than uh, eight that should give us two then we see if uh, one is smaller than nine and that should give us true so once all the statements are true what we're gonna do we we will swap one and uh, five location so basically we're gonna swap the location of one and the five so in in our case now what will happen we're just gonna write one and five places and the uh, whatever the place is or five is we're gonna write five then we will write the other strings like normal that there was nine uh, there were three nine eight and seven so you can see our first pass has been done successfully let me just wait for here our first pass uh, completed now we will start another pass loop which will restart the loop for the second index which is in our case it's five we're gonna see five is smaller than three and that should come as like a uh, false like I said then we're gonna select a three as of a main point uh, as our main element we're gonna see if three is smaller than nine and dot 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 and uh, also return a true it is smaller so we will also also swap three position so now here's an interesting interesting point kind of now we will talk about the nine point like we have swapped we got for now one three we have five and uh, we have nine we have eight and we have seven let me just quickly see if five is smaller than uh nine that should give us true and uh then we're gonna come to continue stuff and every single thing is true so we'll just, we will not change five position we'll keep five as it is so that will in our case that we should have one three five uh nine eight seven so this uh, sorting uh, selection sort is not adaptive neither it is stable i'm gonna just tell you right now so first of all we're gonna go like that and once we have we're gonna see if uh, nine is if nine is smaller than uh, 
uh, 8 and uh, that should give us false now we're gonna select the 8 and we're gonna see if 8 is smaller than a 7 and that should also give us false so in the end we'll select the 7 as our main number and uh, we will swap 9 position with 7 so you can see we have swapped the 9 and 7 so that should probably give us 1 1 3 or 5 9 8 one three five no one three five seven eight and nine so we will uh, uh, like start another loop for eight we're gonna see if eight is greater than nine but we will not start any loop for nine because we already know that this is the last number uh, that we don't we can't just like check it with anything else so this should probably be the largest number available and this should be the shortest number so we're not gonna swap this after it just checking uh, seven and eight and after checking 8 and 9 so uh, we all well, yes we do need to check 8 and 9 that which one is the greatest whoever it is we're gonna swap those positions and after 8 and 9 we're not gonna check 9 so because we already know this is the greatest one so we're gonna leave it as it is so this is not adapt to and what do I mean by adapt to uh, I mean that this is not like this is not a good uh, kind of algorithm because even if uh, if our list is sorted it will still run the same amount of loops as it will run without sorted so even if the list is sorted it will, doesn't matter it, it, it will still check if well, one is like smaller than all of the numbers I mean, it, if all of the numbers are in a sort of bad pattern, so this should not uh, literally matter. But what could happen? Yeah, when it, once you check if everything is like one is smaller than others, then you will see three smaller than others. It will still run the same amount of loops. That is, n squared. I'm gonna say n squared. It will take n, n squared co time complexity, where n is the size of of a list. What about the size of a list is we're gonna take it as a variable n and we're gonna make it like that and uh, this is also not so i talked uh, talking about the adaptiveness and uh, i talked about the what was the another thing i don't remember uh I'm, I'm gonna say that look oh stability it's also not stable so what do we mean stable like let's say we have two sevens here we have seven and seven here so what's gonna do we're gonna go like one three five seven like it's gonna just like first of all take one and once we just take one it's gonna check which one is smaller then we're gonna say let's do, for example let's we're gonna take the seven this seven one we're gonna put this seven one somewhere uh out here then we're gonna put this seven out here so you know the thing is if the, there are two variables there are two variables with the same element with the same value it doesn't it will not care that if which value is which element is the first which is the second it will just swap yeah that's the big problem in our case it will not be sta it's not a stable algorithm so it will just swap the values you might not you may not understand this thing but this is the basic thing you need to understand and uh, while we have already know about most of this stuff so now let's get to our visual studio and let's create a program so this is the basic uh, boilerplate now we, we, what we're gonna do we're gonna create an array with the integer a is uh, a array is equal to uh, parentheses starting so we're gonna go like let's just copy our thing from here we're gonna put a semicolon here now we're gonna create an integer n which will be the size of our array we can just uh, like write the size of our array which is six uh, but I what, what I pr would prefer personally we're gonna go like size of a divided by size of integer because our array is an int is an integer format so we're gonna just put us the divided by size of integer and this uh let it program will just automatic automatically just detect how much long of an array size is then we're gonna probably create an print array function and it should get uh, our uh, int array a and uh, our size of the array so we're now gonna create a wide function wide uh, print array we're gonna go like that it will get integer star a because a is in a uh, array so we need to make it an integer star a as a pointer and then we're gonna go like n we're gonna put also our 
integer n it's not important to name it n you can name it whatever because we're just like getting something into the print array now we're gonna start the two we're gonna start a, a for loop not two for loop like one only one for loop which uh, in which case the integer i is, should be equal to zero because we want to start from the index zero and how much time how many times we want to start the loop we want to uh, continue the loop n times which means the how many like six times if this n is six times so the loop should continue six times like from the beginning to the ending and then we're gonna go like, we're gonna go like print f will print percentage d with a space which should have our array a i what do we mean by ai say so, uh percentage d which will that's like a print our uh, array is current in the index element say so which is zero so it will just get see what element is on array index zero so it will just print that and why did i put a space here because we don't want to make we don't want our like all of our elements to be together we want a little bit of space in between so for that purpose now let's let me run this you can see five one three nine eight seven so our first program is done now what i'm going to do i'm going to make another program that will just for like uh selection so that will also take the same values as a and n now let me just copy this one we paste it here so we need to check off the running of our number two function now we're going to create our function it should not be also wired because we're not going to return anything to the uh from the function so we're going to go like uh selection selection sort and it should also get the same things integer a and integer n oh sorry now here we're going to just first of all start a for loop for integer i is equal to zero and integer is smaller than i minus one now you might be a little bit confused why i'm just uh why i mentioned here i am n minus one because let me just tell you all right n minus one is just because you need listen the n size of the array is actually like one two three four five five six like i told you before we don't need to check the last integer like we don't really need to check the last integer because we already know whatever le is integer whatever integer is left in the end that is automatically just like it detected as it's the largest one so we don't need to check the last last one and uh, we only need to check the elements which are before the last one which is those five to five elements so we will not will exclude this exclude the last element so you're gonna just not uh, uh just like put that in our kind of like a loop so in here uh, uh well we will also i'm gonna just tell you what, what i'm gonna do i'm gonna create another for loop which will be integer j and the count this should be like this should count from the zero to n and the integer j should be equals to i plus one and you might be a little bit confused why i mentioned here i plus one let me just tell you so integer j is equal to i plus one and i value is zero so integer j will probably be one the integer j will be pointing at one and the integer j should continue unless until it's uh and it should continue like it should just like loop all all of the uh through all of the array which is then n6 and it will just check if every of the like it will just check every single element and it will just put the smallest one at the at the position of the index zero first then index one then two three and four five so uh, it will just uh, like uh, change the indexes in like that but what we're gonna do here we're gonna first of all create an integer let's say key is equal to i we're gonna just like give the i value or, or to key first of all so now in our case currently it is zero and then we're gonna create an if statement we're gonna say if a a j which in our case a j for now is as selected as one as element one is equal to a key so what do we mean by a key so for now you can see a j is selected as a like a j is selected as one and a key is selected as five is not equal to i'm gonna say a j is smaller than a key one second all right what what, what we're doing right now we're just seeing if the uh, if uh a j uh, if j l index so a j uh, in our case for now is the a well i plus one in our case i is equal to zero for now we're gonna say if a j one if one is smaller than five if it is smaller than five what we're gonna do that we're gonna change the value of five we're gonna swap them we're gonna say five is equal to one and one is equal to five and we're gonna change the location i'm gonna show you what we're gonna do i'm gonna go like key is equal to j i'm just gonna, I'm just gonna mention that here 
So what what will happen actually? The indexes will change. The index of the uh, look look the value of key first was zero. Now the value of key will become one. Now off we need to first of all just get out of the loop and after getting out of the loop we will uh, we will just create another uh, integer here name as temporary this is used to swap the elements we're gonna go like first of all we'll say temp is equal to a ai so we're saying temporary is equal to ai ai so what i'm saying here i'm saying the temporary is equal to ai and uh, what's AI? AI is equal to, you can see, zero. So we're going to say temporary is equal to zero index. Then we'll say the AI is equal to a key. Like we already said, a key is equal to J. If this statement uh, like is correct, then they will just swap the values. If it's not correct, then they will not, they're not going to swap the values. As we already, saw, well, we already told the key is equal to I. If the like this loop will, will not satisfy the if the if statement will not be satisfied well, they are not gonna just, they're just gonna keep the value same as it is but if the loop is like if the if statement match they're gonna change the values I'm gonna say first of all just give the value of AI to temporary variable so once we just swap we now can see we're saying AI is equal to a key now we're changing the value of AI to a key we're changing the index of or we're just changing the index like we're saying a0 is equal to now a1 so now they're going to change the elements we have the elements then we're going to say a key is equal to temporary now whatever the value of a ui was we're going to swap them we're going to say a key is now is equal to temporary and this is just a basic program let me show you this is how a basic program looks like and once we save that we we'll run that oh it's gonna mess we're gonna print another print of we're gonna print some uh Space here. I'm gonna put some space backslash n. Now, look what we're getting here. We're getting one three five seven h nine. While three one three five seven h nine, you can see our uh, our total indexes has been just like turned uh, from left to right, and this is so easy, man. You can see we have successfully done our thing, and uh, just to clarify, just to show you guys more of a, more of uh, information, what we're gonna do? We're gonna just print uh, the elements where we are currently. We're gonna say like print f current element percentage d is ai. No, I say i. Now current uh, element, not the current pass. So they will just show us how many passes they are running into in total. Current pass is equal to that. Oh, sorry. So in total, you can see they are running five passes. So we're gonna go like i plus one, just to sh make sure they don't show us zero. So in total, they are running five passes, and after running five passes. We're getting the value, like I told you. We're not uh, detecting the last one, so let me just make another thing clear here. That's gonna be we're printing the error here. And uh, what else can we do here? We can go like to the part. Like without, we can just get put this value inside of our loop. So you can get to know in every pass well, how is the value changing. All right, let me just clear this first of all. Okay, so look, look what's happening actually. I wanted to make sure that you know every single thing. Look, first of all, this is a normal array. In the current pass one, then what did they, what did they, they swap the value and f one with five, and every single other thing is the same. Now after that, this swap they check if five is smaller than three, and they said no. They said three. They said they see look at if three is smaller than nine. Yes, the three is smaller than eight. Three is smaller than seven. Then swap the value of one, three, and five. They just put the change the value position of five and three, and then they check if five is smaller than all of those uh, oh, elements, and they detect it as yes. So they didn't change the position. Then they check if nine is smaller than seven. They said yes. It then said. They said the 7 is smaller than 8, they said yes, then they swap the position of 9 and 7, they put the uh, put, uh, 9, they change the value of 9 to 8, to an off, off 7 position, 
Then they checked if uh, seven, eight is more greater, smaller than nine. They said yes. So they didn't. They didn't change the position, and they kept it the same position. And uh, to make the things more clear, let me add some something more into this part. Look like a print. Final sorted array is person is D A. Oh, oh yeah yeah sorry <laughs> they we need to start the loop for this also for integer i is equal to zero is equal to this actually we're not gonna start any loop I guess we need to Oh, sorry, man. Print, print F finals sorted array is. Put some space. You can see final sorted array is one five one three five seven eight nine. And to act some little bit more, we're gonna also show what we are changing. This is that. I'm gonna go like print array that. And that to be a little bit more time consuming if we're gonna do that. I was just thinking to just first of all print our first array, then the number seven. Never mind, we already did so good things here. I already showed you, you can see final sort of array is this, and uh, this was the first array. So guys, hope you already enjoyed this video, if you do hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel and I will upload more of the videos in the future. So bye bye and I will see you in the next